the third part of this course is the task portion, meaning now we will go through the tasks that you can expect on the test itself. First, let me just tell you immediately that there are three levels to these tasks, meaning a pre-intermediate, intermediate, and the advanced level, or as they call them in Duolingo, one, two, and three. The level that we are planning is level three, meaning the advanced level. That's the 120 points that we're usually going for for the university admittance. So in this case, we will start with the read and complete task. And the example and the answer that I've put here is the level three example. This type of a task is a paragraph with the words missing, and then you need to fill in the gaps. So you can see here, it's about electrical engineering. When it comes to a topic, you can expect anything from electrical engineering to a history subject. So it does not matter. Uh, you should read, obviously, you should read a lot in order to know the vocabulary. But sometimes it's not really necessary to know all of the topic vocabularies or glossaries, as they call them sometimes. Why? Let us now go through the tips, and I'm going to tell you how we can easily solve this type of a task. All right, so the first tip is to read the whole text first, because when you are not sure, the context can help a lot with the solving. Actually, I'm going to add one more. Sometimes an answer is actually hidden within the paragraph. Let us go back and I'm going to show you what I mean by this. Let's take a look. It starts with electrical engineering as many subdisciplines. Then the paragraph continues. And then the word that you're missing here is it says, although mm -hmm, are elect, okay? And then the spelling is already given at the beginning of the test, the, this text itself. So Bear this in mind that the answer to a word that you're missing is maybe hidden somewhere within the same text. The second step that I can give you is the, the name of this type of exercise, and that's a closed test. And if you look this up online, you can find additional exercises and practice a lot. The third one is a time saving tip, and that's to use the backspace to erase. Uh, do not move your pointer because as we've gone through in the rules, that can actually, if you just move it to the end of the screen, like I will right now, okay? So that's bad. They can think you're accessing another app. So move, just leave the mouse pointer somewhere in the middle and delete the missing letters or the letters that you have typed with the backspace. Now we come to my favorite tip. In the additional materials, in miscellaneous part, you will find a list of common words that you can expect in this type of a task. Those are articles, prepositions, pronouns. You will see the list and you will see most importantly, the examples, what you can expect. When you go through that, you can actually very easily sometimes fill in even more than half the text that you're given. Let us go back again to the one that we have here. So in this particular paragraph, we have nine words missing. Five of them are the words from the list of the most common words that I have given you. There, who, of, et cetera. Sometimes it's even more. I found examples where out of, for example, 11 missing words, eight of them are the most common ones that you will find in the list that I have given you. Now, let us just stop sharing and let me tell you a bit about the rules for this part. There are two of them. First and foremost, try to remember this one because I really don't want you to lose points. The only spelling that is accepted here is the American spelling. Okay? In the rest of the test, you can use both British and American spelling, meaning when you're writing, and doing the writing task, or when you're typing after listening to a sentence, you can use both British and American. Here in read and complete, only American spelling is accepted and allowed. When it comes to rule number two, it's that that you actually lose points if you do not type in the words 
correctly. So obviously, because the spelling is kind of a point, you will not get the points if you misspell the word. And that brings me back to American one. If you spell theater with R-E, you will lose a point because that's British spelling. E-R would be American one. In the additional materials, again, in the section useful sites, you will see a link to the most comprehensive list of almost 2,000 words in American and British spelling, so you can see what the American spelling looks like. You can expect this type of an exercise, meaning read and complete, around six times during your test. They say between three and seven, but usually it's around six. First task was read and complete. Now let us go through the read and select. And actually we're gonna breeze through two types of tasks, read and select and listen and select. Let me show you an example. So here you need to actually choose the real words, real English words from the list. This is the example of where they have given you the words. As you can see, it's everything from astronomy to traumatic. 11 of them. And in the listen and select, you have the link to the audio example that you can listen to online if you want to. Again, both of these, and not only both of these, all of these tasks are level three tasks. So advanced, advanced tasks from the official Duolingo guide. So you can always take a look at a link and type it in so you can listen to these words and practice. In this case, as you can see, it's only four words, which brings me to two most important tips when this type of an exercise is in question. The first one is that it can easily happen that one task has only four words that are real ones. And then the second one, the next one, is all, it's like 11 or 12 of them. Again, let us go back and listen and select in this particular one. It was suspense, portrait, formula and discriminate. So only four of them. In the read and select, it was 11 real words. So trust your gut. If it's four, it's four. If it's 11, it's 11. And this is how you will know. This is the best tip that I can give you. They do not change only one letter. So if you're wondering, oh, is this with M-A or M-E? If it's only one letter that you're wondering, most probably it's a real word because what they do is they change the whole syllable in, all, in order to make a new word, an, a non-existent word basically. And let us go and take an example from, I said above meaning from the previous slide. So they had the word element. I don't know how they pronounce it, but let's take a look. So element, for example, and the word that exists is ailment, meaning a sickness, an illness. So they changed the whole syllable, not just one letter. Okay, that's how you will know if the word is actually real or if, again, if, it is, if something is too off about it, it most probably isn't. Let us go on to the following task now. Ah, before we do, sorry, you can expect this type of a task six times, same as read and complete. It's between three and seven, but most probably again, six times. Fourth type, listen and type. So let me again show you the example. In this exercise, you need to type the statement that you hear, example. Finally, the results of this investigation were published in a scientific magazine. This is where they test your spelling. Obviously, we're not going to go into spelling now. Spelling is something that you practice every single day in order to help you. I've also given you useful links in the miscellaneous, in the additional materials for both uh, fast typing and spelling. So take a look at those. Here, I will focus on the punctuation because punctuation can also help you get that higher score. Let us take a look at the sentence that we have in front of us. Finally, the results of this investigation, etc. So you have finally, 
um, additionally, furthermore, however, thirdly, lastly, or yes, no, you need to put a comma after those. So linking words, yes and no, demand a comma. Linking words at the beginning of a sentence. The second tip that I can give you is a very useful mnemonic called fanboys. <laughs> and it stands for, for, and nor, but, or, yet, and so. How can you use this one? Let me try to explain what it says here. It says, when they connect two independent clauses, the second clause must be preceded by a comma. A sentence starts with a capital letter and ends with a full stop or a question mark or exclamation point. If you have a sentence within a sentence, <laughs> meaning if you have a subject and a verb, then that sentence within a sentence is called a clause. And if it's an independent clause, meaning two independent thoughts that have a subject and a verb that can stand alone, meaning these two sentences, just like, let's take a look. I love to watch videos with cats and dogs, full stop. This sentence can stand alone. They are so funny. That sentence can also stand alone. But when you have these two sentences within one, then they become clauses and two independent clauses if they meet. The second one has to be separated with a comma. If you have one of the fanboys at the beginning of it. Again, here we have four, but it can be and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Finally, the third tip here is the tip before and if you have three or more things while enumerating. Example, if I say, I saw Mike and Susie, I don't need a comma, I mentioned two things. But if I say, I saw Mike, Susie, and Peter, I have, in this case, three people, and I need to put a comma before and. This is American punctuation, this comma before end. The, remember, reading complete, American spelling, this is American punctuation. So we need a comma before end. And speaking, um, speaking American, you have American and British accents in this exercise. So when you're listening, those are the two accents that you will most probably hear. So that's it. I believe I said everything here. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you can expect this type of an exercise to uh, show up six times. Again, between three and seven. Previous task asked of you to type the sentence that you hear. But now you will be the one reading it out loud. So this one is read aloud. Obviously, oh, sorry, I went to the tip. <laughs> Okay, so this one, uh, you have to record yourself saying, saying the statement that they've given you. In this case, is the following one. I will have gone to the movies by the time you decide what you want to do. Let us immediately dive into the tips and tricks. So you're allowed only one reading. And in order to practice, I really, really, really recommend that you do not read the sentence out loud while recording yourself because there is no second take. You cannot re-record yourself. So keep your mouth closed and read the sentence within those 20 seconds that you have. One of the most common mistakes in this case is that the students, the test takers, delete or add words. If you, let us go back, if you say, for example, I will have gone to movies, you made a mistake, you lost a point. Also, you do not need to add words, okay? You do not need to add anything to the given sentence. This can very easily happen, again, in the form of an article. So maybe you feel like there should be an a or a the before a certain word, but do not do that. Do not add or, again, delete or, you know, just forget to mention any of the words that are within the statement. And this is why, again, why I recommend to keep your mouth closed, just read the sentence and then read it out loud while recording yourself. And finally, this is also a very good tip 
and that's to be mindful of punctuation. In this example that we had, we do not have a comma, but especially if you do have a comma, make a short pause after it. If you remember in the previous task, we had finally, and then the continuation, additionally. Furthermore, if you have the linking words at the beginning, and again, if they have and they should have a comma, make a slight pause after the comma. If you have, for example, the sentence with a lot of and, you know, with a lot of commas and then an and, like we had, I love ice cream, chocolate, and cake, you do need to make a slight pause after each comma. Obviously, if the sentence ends with an exclamation point, raise your voice. The question mark, make it sound like a question. And finally, if it's a full stop, do let your voice scroll down. This is type of an exercise that you can expect between three and seven times or six times overall. Now we come to part two and you will see what that means. Write about the photo, speak about the photo, read then write, read then speak, and listen then speak. These are the types of the tasks that you will expect in part two. All right, so the aspects that you're evaluated on are the following. So this is the list. Grammatical accuracy, grammatical complexity. That means you should use advanced structures like second and third conditionals, inversions, future perfect continuous, past perfect, etc. When it comes to lexical sophistication and lexical diversity, that means the following. If you use the word like parsimonious, that's a cool one, that's a really good one that shows the sophistication, but then you have to use the synonyms like stingy or frugal. That's the diversity part. Task relevance, how well you answer the question that was asked means if you stay on topic or if you go off topic. Fluency, how much you can say or write in a limited time. Please do speak for all 90 seconds and do write more than one sentence or 50 words. Finally, the acoustic features. This is the one that is applied for speaking questions only, obviously, but that's the pronunciation and the pace. Pace, meaning the tempo and the pronunciation we've discussed, like making a pause after a comma. All of this is from the official Duolingo guide. Write about the photo. Write about the photo is a task where you need to write one or more sentences that describe the given image. Maybe you have already seen this one if you've taken the Duolingo practice test. This is the level three one. And this, the following one, is speak about the photo task. Obviously, where you need to describe the image aloud. All right, so as I said, always write more than one sentence and talk for the whole 90 seconds. Do not talk for 60 seconds if you want the high rate, talk for 90. Steps that can help you achieve this is step number one, describe what you see, the main subject, and this is the part where you can label. Why I say this is the part? Because in general, you should not just label what you see. You should not just enumerate Oh, this and this and this. Let me give you an example. So I see a rocket. Eh, it's in the sky. Mm, there is a lot of debris around it. Okay, that's not the way to get the 120 points. That's the part where I said you can label only in the first sentence. You can call it your topic sentence, but in the first sentence, if, for example, it's describing the photo, that would sound something like this. Oh, I see an elderly woman in a poorly lit room. I've labeled, meaning I just said what I see, but it's also a bit spruced up with an, an interesting adjective like well lit room and an elderly woman. This brings me to step number two, and that is to add detail right, add details in the case, again, of the photo that we just had, you can maybe describe the room or what she looks like. And finally, this is very important. Again, the point is to describe the image, not to label, 
but to describe. And this means to tell a story about the image. And what you can do is to speculate, meaning to guess what this moment is actually representing, what kind of a story it's telling us. In order to speculate, you can use the phrases like it appears that, it seems like, it could be, perhaps, etc. So these are really good phrases for speculating. All of the modals or all of the ones that I just mentioned are a really good one. In the case of the elderly woman, we can say, um, it appears that she is burning the midnight oil, or uh, she could have taken up a hobby, or perhaps she had an order and she was putting it off until the last minute, and now she has to finish it until the day breaks. So this is the speculation part, and this is what you should be going for. And in the case, you go off topic. Remember, this is very important to stay on topic. But if you do go off topic, which happens, you can always go back with these phrases. As I was saying, okay, you can literally take a breath, as I did, and go back because you, you just caught yourself talking about something completely else. Maybe you were in the case uh, of a rocket, you were talking about the sky, but obviously that shouldn't be the point. And then you can go back with this phrase. So as I was saying, or let me rephrase. Those are the good ones. Let me give you more tips. Okay, so this is how, especially when you're writing, this is what can help you to write about the photo. If there are people in the photo, you can just, you know, maybe guess or see if it's that obvious how the people are feeling. Okay. That they could be sad, they can be depressed, they can be overjoyed. So focus on the feelings. That's step one. Step two, if, if again, not the step two, but possibility two, if you don't have people in the photo, is who took the photo? For example, the photo of a rocket, you can say maybe just a passerby took that photo unexpectedly. She just, she just saw um, a rocket in the sky launching you know, towards space. So think about who took the photo. That's also a very good question to help you with telling a story. And the third one is what could have happened just before or after the moment that the photo was taken? Again, in the case of a rocket, maybe it was a launch. And that was, again, a really good starting point for your story. So the feelings, who took the photo, and what happened just before or after the photo, after the moment the photo was taken. Let us stop here for these two types of tasks and move on to the next one. This is it. The last three tasks of the graded portion. Read, then write. Read, then speak. Listen, then speak. When I say the last three, obviously there are the last three in this video course. They do mix them in the actual test. You should know that because hopefully you already did your practice test as I suggested. Let us start with read, then write. You should write more than 50 words while responding to the question. If you're aiming for a higher grade, 115, 120, around 75 would be okay. Read, then speak. Do speak for the entire time, meaning all 90 seconds, if you're going for the higher grade. Finally, this is the hidden one or the secret one. It is not on the practice test for some reason, but it is in the actual test, and that's listen, then speak. You will hear an audio question. The example, describe a situation when you have given or received praise. You get three replays of the audio question, which is a good thing, and then you need to talk for, again, 90 seconds in order to answer this one. The structure is really helpful when you're answering these questions. You do get prompts that help you with the structure. 
what I mean by that. For example, in talk about a gift, you get questions. What was the gift? Who did you give it to? How did it make you feel? And why did you give it to this particular person? These are the prompts that you need to focus on. Do not go off topic. Do not talk about the gift itself, you know, describing the gift if they did not ask you to. That's very important. You need to stay on subject. Use the prompts. However, if you do not know how to answer, try discussing why you can't answer or why it is challenging to respond. What I mean by that, sometimes students, if they cannot, if they do not have an answer to a question, example, talk about a situation when you travel somewhere and yet you have never traveled. So do not invent a travel story because what happens then is you're focusing more on inventing a story rather than the language itself. That's why, you know, do not invent a story, but talk about why you can't answer, meaning in this case, you simply have not traveled anywhere. So do say that. Focus on the language. This is an English test. So they're not going to talk, they do not care uh, so much about the story, uh, obviously, but they do care about the, the, the language. When it comes to the structure of a writing task, again, you do get prompts that will help you with the structure. You know, let us go back one more time to see that. So, do you agree or disagree with the statement? And why is that? So, you need to um, give specific, as I said, specific reasons for agreeing or disagreeing. And this is a plan, a writing plan that I suggest. Start with an introduction. I said topping sentence, topic sentence would be for a paragraph. In this case, it would be an introduction. So start with an introduction, one to two sentences, more than enough, because again, you're on the clock. So one sentence, again, would be really good. Then first paragraph means first idea plus one or two specific examples. And then the second paragraph is your second argument. And again, one or two examples. If it's a situation like agreeing or disagreeing, again, if you both agree and disagree, or you have pros and cons, or you do see the advantages and disadvantages of a certain topic, you can say that. You can talk about the advantages in the first paragraph, giving obviously a valuable argument for, or again, in the second paragraph, giving arguments against a certain statement. Finally, in the conclusion, this could be a very easy one. Just paraphrase what you said in the introduction, and you, but paraphrasing means, means using synonyms, okay? <laughs> so do not just copy paste the introduction, but do paraphrase it. Finally, the language. This is the recipe that I've mentioned. And these are the ingredients. So one conditional sentence, hopefully, preferably at least two, uh, second and the third conditional. Then the inversion, seldom do people, rarely do people, uh, had I known, etc. One inversion, more than enough. Use as if instead of like, obviously in those situations when you can, because they're not absolute synonyms. She looks as if she had been working all night was that would be the example from the elderly lady at the sewing machine that we had. And when it comes to the examples, I'm going to actually mention uh, the same um, the same picture that we talked about. So the ones that I the phrasal verbs that I used there uh, were the take up a hobby and put something off. And the idiom that I used was burning the midnight oil. Obviously, you can use more. You can use two idioms or you can use five phrasal verbs, but and be sure they're adequate. Talking about adequacy, here we go. You have vocabulary and the tenses. Using advanced vocabulary also means trying to stay clear <laughs> of the words like nice, beautiful, amazing, very. Try. Obviously, it's not that harmful if you use one very or nice but try to use the advanced vocabulary without these, the, the simple ones. 
And then finally, the tenses. If you do have a topic about technology or any, um, any, any chance where you can uh, use the future tenses, do use the future perfect or future perfect continuous. Same goes if you get a topic, um, you know, a history subject, you can talk and you should use uh, the perfect tenses like past perfect and past perfect continuous. That's it. That's it for this portion. So these were the graded tasks. Now we're gonna go in and talk about the last two that are part of the test, but they're not graded. Those are the interview questions. Okay, let's move on. The last part, not graded, but very important because this is the interview section. This means this is the part that the university will see. All of the rules, not rules, but tips that we discussed for writing and speaking in the graded portion also apply here. And please not lower your standards just because it's not graded. Again, as I said, the university will see only this portion of your test. Let us go through the examples very quickly. So when it comes to speaking, you need to speak for three minutes on a given topic. And when it comes to writing, you need to write for five minutes. As you can see here in the examples, the questions are pretty personal. Who is a person you think you have impacted in your life? And what is one thing you like about your personality? They should be personal because, again, this is an interview, a virtual interview, an interview, actually, and that's why you need to treat it as such. You know what they say, there is no second chance for a first impression, so make it a good one. This concludes the past part of this course. Actually, this concludes three main parts of the entire course. Duolingo versus IELTS and TOEFL, rules, and tasks. At this point, I have nothing else left for me to say but that I wish you good luck with your exams.